Okay, this one's gonna be like legit ASMR style. I don't even know how this is gonna sound. A couple things of note. One mic. You can see I'm using one mic instead of two because like for the last, oh, 120 plus videos I've been using two mics which were purposed to be binaural but nothing I do is binaural requiring the two. So hey, guess what? One mic from now on and then I'll just mess with any kind of audio settings I want to. Two. I'm talking really low right now. This is not my normal voice. I'm at my other house right now. And as such, there's a person right there, right behind that wall. And I care about that person. I want them to get sleep. It's like 3.45 a.m. right now because I'm a maniac and reading about Chick-fil-A between Saturday and Sunday. Okay, let's read about it. Why am I reading about Chick-fil-A? Because uh, it won in the poll. It won, in, it won in the bowls. It sounds so weird to say that. Like, it's this, well, it not a campaign. It's not a camp. It was, actually. Now that I think of it, it was a campaign voting for who gets the wiki read, and it won. So let's just give it its fair shake here. Fast food battle royale. It'll be a six-day battle across burgers, pizza, chicken, and wild card. You'll see in today's battle, Mexican, the finalists will face off to deem the best overall fast food. Pick the best this time. So this one, uh, the Mexican one, this one was Taco Bell Del Taco Chipotle Codoba. How do you pronounce that? Q-doba. Codoba. Doba. Uh, Moe's Southwest Grill, which I've never been to, but you guys raved about that place. I think Pepperoni Tony said to check it out, because, yeah, every time they go down south. Anyway, out of that one, uh, Taco Bell won 60%. Wendy's surprisingly won the um, hamburger category. Uh, out of like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Hardee's, Carl's Jr., Jack in the Box, super surprising to me. Actually, I thought just the numbers alone and familiarity, people would have went with McDonald's. So that's kind of wild. Oh, also, um, nah, I won't address it. I was going to talk about my setup, the fact that like I'm a Okay, I am gonna talk about it, I guess. This is nice. I'm on my actual bed bed for once. This is the first time I've ever actually made a video on my bed. Other times, I will actually be filming, or was filming, in my closet. My spacious closet right there. I'm being facetious. It's very cramped, actually. And uh, the other one is at the other house in a... Uh, it's uh, you could call it a studio, but I stand for that. I'm on my ball. I record in different ways. This is the first time I'm actually on my bed, so I've got a wraparound green screen, and then my bed is right over here. And I feel like Simon from Gamer. You remember he had that cool, like he would sit in the middle of the thing, and then all around him, the 360 was the screen. It kind of reminds me of that. I gotta do a uh, gamer reading. Okay, where were we? Fast food battle royale. <laughs> McDonald's Burger King, and then it went on to pizza, fast food, day three, pizza, and yeah, these are all listed in order of location sizes, so Pizza Hut, 18,703 locations, and then at the end, would have been Papa Murphy's, 1,425 locations, they didn't make it though, the pole placement only allowed for five places, yeah, otherwise I would have had way longer lists, but it's cool, anyway, Domino's crushed it, I'm fine, I can eat any of these, oh, one of you also recommended, or a couple of you recommended Hunt Brothers, which I never heard of, but there's a bunch of comments, even though it only got 2%, like next to nothing out of all of the, um, you know, Pizza Hut, Domino's, Hunt Brothers, Papa John's, Little Caesars, Hunt Brothers got 2%, everyone else got like a decent share, but the comments actually did, um, talk about Hunt Brothers, I don't want to click on it because it's a pain in the ass to get back in this browser, anyway, moving on, so Domino's won that one, then Chicken, day four was a chicken battle. And KFC, Popeyes, Chick-fil-A, Churches, Buffalo Wild Wings, and yeah, we saw this early on, actually, that Chick-fil-A was going to sweep it. You can say rightfully so for a lot, whatever, you know, and I'm not going to say anything, chicken, chick, the chicken category is a heated one. I think, I think, uh, as the polls show, though, the majority is, in fact, fine with Chick-fil-A winning. They're so good. I love Chick-fil-A. Having said that... Uh, because of Matthew Larson's uh, uh, comment, if you watched the show yesterday, you you'll know the 
show. I just called it a show. If you were listening yesterday, then you know I did uh, eat finally the Popeye's chicken sandwich. I went spicy. I didn't want to eat both. I just, you know what I mean? I could go original or I could eat, you know, if, if there's weird breaks in my train of thought, just so you know, we have a chicken coop and it's like I'm hearing bangs over there and I keep on getting sidetracked thinking like, is a raccoon trying to eat the goddamn chickens right now? So that's what I'm contending with. Okay, so if you see every once in a while, I stop and I'm like, it's like, yeah, I feel like one of my little feathered friends is about to get taken out by an asshole murderer that roams the trees at night. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Chick-fil-A won, and yeah, I did have that Popeye spicy chicken sandwich, and it was so good. Hey, it made me feel like a dog shit, though, having said that, like, later in the day, and then the next morning, I felt like it ain't healthy for you. Let's be real. Delicious, though. They figured it out. The All of the, like, the softness and sweetness of the bun, and then you have, it's not a crunchy chicken. It's, they figured out the batter, so it, like, it's flaky, and it's spicy, and then you bite into the meaty chicken. All of it's perfect. It is all perfect. So, highly recommend for taste, not for health. And, and uh, if you like not having stomach problems, okay. So yeah, Chick-fil-A won. Next one was, uh, oh, wild card. This one kind of like, if this was a movie for me, this would be like where the, um, like one of the lead characters that you really grew attached to dies. That's what, what this part would have been. Because I, I was voting for Panda on this one. Uh, sorry, there's a dog that's up and walking around right now. Tip, tip, tapping on uh, on wood floors. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, Panda Express was my, uh, uh, what's it called? My Ned Stark. And we know what happened to Ned Stark. So Dairy Queen did win. Hey, in fairness... Uh, I'm a, a big fan of Dairy Queen too. Okay, they're blizzards. I lived in Idaho for a short while, and when I went there, Dairy Queen was something that bonded my family and I. You know, after you move with your family to a new state and you're kind of alone, Dairy Queen was a beacon of hope. You know, the blizzards became a routine thing, so I think it's very cool. They have good, decent, like, um, you know, burgers and, and whatnot also, so that's cool. And more importantly, they're f a familiar face across the U.S., so if you're ever driving, hey, worldwide, that's why they're on this list, actually. And, uh, yeah, so that's cool that they won, but like I said, when I saw Panda, they were neck and neck. These guys were neck and neck for a while, like 35%, 35%, and then Dairy Queen pulled ahead. I was like, ah, oh, that sucks, because Panda, man, they're so good. And they're not terrible for you either. Panda is a great uh, uh, dinner option, in my opinion. I love them. Heck, oh, I would say I'm getting them today, but I'm actually going for all-you-can-eat sushi. Actually, with Jake. You guys know Jake. I'm going for all-you-can-eat sushi in, like, seven hours. So, I have to get to sleep. Sorry, I'll continue. And finally, the wild card meant... Dairy Queen was going to go head to head with Taco Bell, Wendy's, Domino's, and Chick fil A in the finals, and obviously Chick fil A swept it. And here we are now. You know how we arrived finally to the Chick fil A reading. Let me check OBS really quick to see how long we were going just on that so I can know whether or not to separate these into two separate videos if I should go. Oh my god, 11 minutes I've been talking about. We, okay, so we recapped. Okay, so the title of this one is going to be um, The Best Fast Food. Recapping the Best Fast Food and Full Chick-fil-A Reading, I think is what it's going to be. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to have... There's the dog. You could hear the dog shaking. Uh, I'm going to have to... This is going to be a weird one for me because um, I don't know if you know there's a little bit of insight. It's very, it's easier. It's way easier to talk at a normal level than at whatever nonsense I'm doing right now. How my life kind of... 
evolved into this. I don't know, but it's weird. I have, you have to control your voice way more, and the fact that I'm about to embark on a Chick-fil-A reading. No, anyway, here we go. Leave me a like and subscribe, please. The shit I do for this. Chick-fil-A. Here we go. Chick-fil-A, a play on the American English. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I swear we'll get to this in one reading. I don't know if anyone cares. You probably picked up on it because I'm in the other house. So yeah, it's a different configuration. The monitor is up there now. That's why I'm, duh. That's why I'm looking up there. Usually I'm like this. Also, my posture is shit because I'm just like laying. I'm, I'm just like sitting on my bed. I don't want to pass out. I'm very comfortable right now. It's like cushiony and nice. But yeah, so the monitor is usually over there. And so I'll look down like this, and now I'm like, oh, so here we go. And I gotta like and talk into the mic like this. Okay, Chick Fil A. Uh, play on the American English pronunciation of fillet. Thank you, thank you for clarifying. Wikipedia is one of the largest American fast food restaurant chains, and the largest whose specialty. Uh, that's such a good word. Is chicken sandwiches. Its headquarter is in College Park, Georgia. The company operates 2,815 restaurants, primarily in the United States, with locations in 47 states, District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico. Future restaurants are planned in Hawaii and will bring their presence in the U.S. to 48 states and two territories, though its former locations in the United Kingdom and South Africa are closed. Chick-fil-A's restaurants in Canada remain open. The restaurant serves breakfast before transitioning to its lunch and dinner menu. Chick-fil-A also offers custom catered selections from its menu for special events. Okay, fine. I don't know why this one's striking me as boring. Hopefully it picks up some steam. Many of the company's values are influenced by the Christian religious beliefs of its late founder, S. Truett Cathy, the devout Southern Baptist, reflecting a commitment to Sunday Sabbatarianism. That's the newest diet. All Chick-fil-A restaurants are closed for business on Sundays as well as on Thanksgiving and Christmas Day to honor the Western Christian liturgical season of Lent. Cool. Uh, Chick-fil-A promotes fish sandwiches in respect of abstinence from meat that characterizes that part of the church year. The company's opposition to same-sex marriage has been the subject of public controversy, though the company has begun loosening its stance on the issue. Good. As well, they should. Don't be silly. Chick-fil-A. The chain's origin can be traced to the Dwarf Grill. Now the Dwarf House, a restaurant opened by S. Truett and Kathy, the chain's former chairman and CEO, in 1946. The restaurant is located in Hapville, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta, and is near the location of the now-demolished Ford Motor Company Atlanta Assembly Plant. Hold on. For many years, a source of many of the restaurant's patrons. Oh, interesting. So the people from the Ford Motor Plant used to go to the Dwarf Grill, which predated uh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, oh, I'll talk about my thing here, here in a bit. In 1961, after 15 years in the fast food business, Kathy found a pressure fryer that could cook the chicken sandwich in the same amount of time it took to cook a fast food hamburger. Whoa. A pressure fryer that could cook the chicken sandwich in the same amount of time. That's cool. Following this discovery, he registered the name Chick-fil-A, Inc., the company's trademark slogan, We Didn't Invent the Chicken. Just the chicken sandwich, that's funny, refers to their flagship menu, the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Several journalists have provided evidence that Cathy's repeated claim to have invented the chicken sandwich referenced in the slogan is untrue, whatever. From 1964 to 67, the sandwich was licensed to over 50 eateries, including Waffle House. Oh, their big Waffle House almost made the, um, what's it called, the, the bowls, but it, it missed it by a little bit, I think, because they're mainly U.S.-based, too, and they weren't global. And the concession stands of the new Houston Astrodome, the Chick-fil-A sandwich was withdrawn from sale at other restaurants when the first standalone location opened in 1967 in the food court of the Greenbrier Mall in a suburb of Atlanta. 
since 60s, I'm sorry, since 97. The Atlanta Bays Company has been the title sponsor of the Peach Bowl, an annual college football game played in Atlanta on New Year's Eve. Chick fil A is also a key sponsor of the SEC and ACC of college athletics. During the 1970s and early 1980s, the chain expanded by opening new locations in suburban malls, food courts. The first freestanding location was opened April 16, 1986, on North Druid Hills Road in Atlanta, Georgia, and the company began to focus more on this standalone type unit rather than on the food court type. Although it has expanded outward from its original geographic base, most re most new restaurants are located in southern suburban areas. Okay. Before the Eat More Chicken Cows, who debuted in 95, the chicken that is still featured in the chain's logo was Chick-fil-A's mascot. The name of the mascot is Doodles. Hey, dude, tell you what, since this is like such... I'm curious if people are going to be passing out because I'm about to pass out to the sound of my own voice. I'm gonna, this is a super easy a trivia question just to see if you guys were paying attention. Just hit me with the name of the mascot that I just read. Hit me with the chicken ma Chick Fil A's chicken mascot name in the comments. Leave that. Be the first one to do it. I'll pin you to the top. I just said it. Easiest thing in the world is just proof that you were paying attention. In 2008. Chick-fil-A became the first fast food restaurant to become completely trans fat free. That's badass. In October 2015, the company owned a three-story, 5,000 square feet, 460 meter square meter restaurant in Manhattan that became the largest freestanding Chick-fil-A in the country at the time. On December 17th, 2017, Chick-fil-A broke their transition. Sorry, that was my stomach. Chick-fil-A broke their tradition and opened a Sunday on a Sunday to prepare meals for passengers left stranded during the power outage at Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport and on January 13, 2019, a Chick-fil-A franchise in Mobile, Alabama opened on Sunday to honor a birthday wish of a 14-year-old boy with cerebral palsy and autism. Dude, Chick-fil-A, you're awesome. Business model. Chick-fil-A's business strategy involves a focus on a small menu and on customer service. I love it. There was, ah, uh, this is a segue, whatever. I'll say it anyway. On the Comedians in Cars with Coffee episode with Will Ferrell, it was funny when they go to that one diner and, like, they have a million things on the menu and Will Ferrell goes, well, the good news is you, you know they make every one of these items perfectly. Sorry, I don't want to laugh into the microphone. Will Ferrell, man, he's a legend. All right, I'll continue. While other fast food chains often expanded their menu offerings to attempt to attract new customers, Chick-fil-A's business model is to remain focused on chicken sandwiches. The name capital A is meant to include that their chicken is grade A top quality. Hey, listen to that, okay? You probably, if you're sleeping or if you're just like you zoned out or whatever the hell, I just want to repeat that line because that's really cool. That's a cool fact to tell your friends. The Chick-fil-A, the, the capital A in Chick-fil-A is meant to indicate that their chicken is grade A top quality. That's cool. In addition, an emphasis on customer service has allowed Chick-fil-A to consistently lead the fast food industry in customer satisfaction. These factors are seen as the reason for Chick-fil-A's growth and expansion in the United States. Chick-fil-A retains ownership of each restaurant. Chick-fil-A selects the restaurant location and builds a Chick-fil-A franchisees need only a $10,000 initial investment to become an operator. Each operator is handpicked and goes through a rigorous training program. The interview is the interviews plus training can take months and is not an easy process. Chick-fil-A states on their site, this is not the right opportunity for you if you are seeking a passive investment in a business. You want to sell property to Chick-fil-A Inc. You're requesting the Chick-fil-A Inc. build at a, spe a specified location or are seeking multi-unit franchise opportunities. Chick-fil-A grossed an average of $4.8 million per restaurant in 2016 despite opening only six days a week. 
highest sales of all fast food restaurants in the United States. Whataburger was second with $2.7 million per restaurant average. Fascinating. $4.8 million per restaurant. Oh, they kill it. Maybe I'll open a Chick-fil-A one day. In 2019, Chick-fil-A became the third largest fast food chain in the United States in system-wide sales, earning 11 $3 billion in sales. Chick-fil-A currently only trails Starbucks, which earned $21.4 billion in 2019, and McDonald's with $40.4 billion in sales in 2019. So they're monsters. Chick-fil-A really are absolute monsters. That line you guys always see that goes down the block, it's warranted. Or, I mean, it not, not it's warranted. It, it backs up the numbers. I'll put it that way corporate culture S. Truitt killed us, sorry, hold on S. Truitt, Kathy was a devout Southern Baptist his religious beliefs had a major impact on the company, the company's official statement of corporate purpose says that the business exists to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us, I mean that's cool to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A, Kathy opposed the company becoming public for religious and personal reasons. I could see that also. I, I, I get that. Again, they're loosening the, the stance on the gay marriage thing, and, and that's that's really cool. Um, obviously, I could understand why that would piss off a lot of people, and I also understand, f coming from their religious beliefs, how that would be an issue for them to, to shake, that they have to continue contend with, and then... Uh, yeah, so I I see both sides. I, I get what's going on, and I, I respect the fact that when you take something public, literally, in, in this sense, in the stock market sense, and just when you decide to showcase what you have to society and people, it's a sensitive situation. You gotta hope that people don't take it and turn it into their own thing, and it stay, or maybe that, but as long as it stays true to your original vision, and uh, and the same morals and everything that it stands for are preserved, and, and I just, I understand where they're coming from, all right? I, and you do, too. Come on, let's be real. Sunday closure. The founders' beliefs are responsible for the chain's most well-known and distinctive feature in accordance with the Christian doctrine of First day Sabbatarianism. All Chick fil A locations, both corporate owned and franchised, are closed on Sundays as well as on Thanksgiving and on Christmas. Kathy states in the final step in his five step recipe for business success I was not so committed to financial success that I was willing to abandon my principles and priorities. Love it. One of the most visible examples of this is our decision to close on Sunday. Our decision to close on Sunday was our way of honoring God and directing, I'm sorry, of directing our attention to things that mattered more than our business. In an interview with ABC News' Nightline, Truett's son, Dandy Kathy, told reporter Vicki Mabry that the company is also closed on Sundays because by the time Sunday came, he was just worn out. It's funny. And Sunday was not a big trading day anyway at the time. So it was closed that first Sunday, and we've been closed ever since. He figured if he didn't like working on Sundays, then other people didn't either. Yeah, hey, good way to look at it. Oh my god, my posture is garbage. Um, the younger Kathy is also quoted his father as saying, I don't want to ask people to do what I am not willing to do myself. I love that guy. I want to work for him. Chick-fil-A's Sunday closures extend to non-traditional locations in addition to countless shopping malls and airports. A Chick-fil-A location at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta is closed on Sundays, despite the fact that its main tenant, the Atlanta Falcons, plays most of their home games on Sundays. Wow. The location is open when the Falcons have a Monday night, Thursday night, or Saturday home game, as well as non-Sunday home games of Atlanta, United, SC, and other events at the stadium. Oh, wow. The Chick-fil-A remained closed for a Super Bowl. L3. L hey, it's 50, right? Is, is the L50? I don't know what the L is. 103, dude. How long has the Super Bowl been? It hasn't been around for 100 years, has it? 
50. I don't know. What's the L? Leave in the comments. On Sundays, the digital signs are flipped into concessionaire levy. Restaurant sells non-branded foods and drinks at the location. Lenten observance to honor the Western Christian liturgical. I like that. <laughs> liturgical. To honor the Western Christian liturgical season of Lent. Chick-fil-A promotes fish sandwiches in respect to the fact that this part of the church here is associated with the Friday fast, with many practicing Christian vegetarianism throughout all the 40 days of Lent, serving chicken without antibiotics. According to the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA and antibiotics used in livestock, many of which are also used to treat humans. I didn't know that, first of all, have contributed to the rise of dangerous bacteria. Okay, according to the FDA, antibiotics used in livestock many of which okay so they use the same antibiotics on us that they do on them that's fine okay cool i dig it in december 2012 the fda announced plans to phase out certain antibiotics in the food production industry february 2014 chick-fil-a announced plans to serve chicken raised without antibiotics in its restaurants nationwide within five years chick-fil-a was the first quick service restaurant to set forth a plan and commit to serving only poultry raised without antibiotics they achieved this goal in may 2019 oh dude quick shout out to mcbra by the way i meant to uh, shout you out beforehand because you were asking what happened to all the intros and i was saying too many people uh, want just this straight wiki reading and everything, but then I realized, ah, maybe I don't care. I'm just going to be personable when I talk. And I also thought of you because your name McBra, and then it's like Chick-fil-A, and it's not Chick-fil-A. I was thinking McDonald's, but it would be like McChicken. It's just kind of funny, the association. McChicken, McBra, chicken. Doesn't matter. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to do intros now and, and all that kind of stuff back to normal, largely because of input from you and people like you that leave really cool comments asking for me to, hey, be myself and be personable because that was, that's what this uh, channel is all about, right? Recipe changes. Did I already read? Becoming only poultry right without badly achieve the goal. Yeah, okay, cool. Recipe changes. In 2011, not 19, food blogger and activist Vanny Hari wrote a post titled Chick-fil-A or Chemical Filet. Uh, go F yourself on her website, foodbabe.com. I shouldn't say that. Maybe there's legit concerns. I shouldn't jump the gun just because they're attacking my, my one of my favorite foods, right? She asserted that Chick-fil-A sandwiches contain nearly 100 ingredients, including peanut oil with TBHQ. Sounds delicious. Did they make that in a spicy version? In October 2012, Chick-fil-A invited Hari to meet with company executives at its headquarters in December 2013. Chick-fil-A notified Hari that it had eliminated the dye yellow number five and had reduced the sodium content in its chicken soup. The company also said that it's testing a peanut oil that does not contain TBHQ and that it would start testing sauces and dressings made without high fructose corn syrup in 2014. I love Chick-fil-A. They're like acting on it. Maybe I'll buy stock in them. International location. Like they're not going anywhere, right? Am I about to jinx Chick-fil-A? International locations. Canada. In September 1994, Chick-fil-A opened its first location outside the United States inside a student center food court at the University of Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This location did not perform very well and was closed within two or three years. The company returned to the province of Alberta by opening an outlet at the Calgary International Airport in Calgary in May 2014. This restaurant closed in 2019. In July 2018, Chick-fil-A announced plans to expand within Canada by opening a new restaurant in Toronto, Ontario. In 2019, that location opened on September 6th, 2019 in the Yonge and Bloor Street, Yonge, 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 how do you say that, and Bloor Street area, with protesters criticizing the violation of animal rights in the company's history of supporting anti-LGBTQ causes. Chick-fil-A announced it would open two other locations in Toronto during 2019 and 12 additional stores in the greater Toronto area over the subsequent five years. Chick-fil-A opened its second Toronto location in Yorkdale Shopping Center and in the second half 2021 opened two freestanding restaurants with drive throughs one in Kitchener, Ontario and one in Windsor, Ontario, South Africa. Dude, all I can think, two things, this is, this is my evolution of my, of my thought process with South Africa. First, when I thought of South Africa, I thought of Dave Matthews. 
this is just me, this is deviating from the Chick-fil-A for a moment, when, when someone would say, like, South Africa, if you hit me, like, 10 years, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, or whatever, I'd be like, oh, yeah, Dave Matthews, Dave Matthews from South Africa, that's all I think of for some odd reason, right? Then cut scene to, like, six or seven months ago, when I'm on Reddit, and I see that crazy video of those armed vehicle dudes, the, the guys that like you know like a brinks security truck out here the guys that ferry the money between banks it's an armored vehicle you guys know what they are and these two dudes these poor bastards responsible for whatever uh they were carrying getting chased by dudes with guns and they were shooting at them and there's a dash cam but it's facing the drivers the 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 armed vehicle guys and it is like not a who does good chase scenes it's not michael bay it's like right out of a movie your heart is pounding out of your chest when you're watching it and now that's what i think of when i hear south africa is that crazy armored car bullets going through a chase scene definitely check i think they i'm almost certain they made it out alive and it was okay but anyway let's talk about chick-fil-a and south africa <laughs> In August 1996, Chick-fil-A opened its first location outside of North America by building a restaurant in Durban, South Africa. A uh, second location was opened in Johannesburg, November 1996. Since neither of the South African locations was profitable, both these locations were closed in 2001. Wow. United Kingdom, a Chick-fil-A operated in Edinburgh. Is it Edinburgh or Edinburgh? How do you pronounce that? Like Duckburg. Hey, maybe it's Duckborough, right? During spring 2018, on October 10th, 2019, Chick-fil-A returned to Europe that didn't work. It's DuckTales, not Duckburg in the song, with the opening of a store at the Oracle Shopping Center in Reading, UK. The store closed in March 2020 after the Oracle opted not to continue the lease of the location beyond the six-month pilot period period in the face of continued protests over the chain's anti-LGBTQ stance. February 2019, Chick-fil-A opened a store on a 12-month pilot scheme in Aviemore, Scotland. Aviemore. In Aviemore, Scotland. The store was closed in January 2020 amidst protest and controversy from locals and customers regarding the chain's former donations to charity supporting anti-LGBTQ rights causes planned locations on july 2018 or in july 2018 rather chick-fil-a announced it will be opening its first location in hawaii in kahului kahului in early 2022 with additional locations in honolulu and kapoleo to follow in december 2020 it was announced the company would open a new location in puerto rico the first puerto rican location opened on march 3rd 2022 in bayamona advertising let me get a drink you know what i'm gonna kill this thing i can't even believe i'm drinking this vanilla coffee coke this is so far and away of anything i would normally drink but they gave it to me for free at the amazon fresh store because like i did i answered this drawing for free groceries for a year or whatever it was and i because i saw they were giving uh free chocolates and then they gave me this too i just wanted the free chocolate if we're being honest but yeah dude if someone wants to hook me up with free groceries for a year i'm gonna take that too it is pretty good though Advertising. Eat more chicken is the chain's most prominent advertising slogan created by the Richards Group in 1995. The slogan is often seen in advertisements featuring Holstein dairy cows. They're often seen wearing or holding signs. They usually read Eat More Chicken in all capital letters. The ad campaign was temporarily halted on January 1st, 2004 during a mad cow disease scare so as not to make the chain seem insensitive or appear to be taking advantage of the scared <laughs> Increase its sales. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because of the mad cow thing, the, that whole thing is just very sick and twisted. I, I love the, uh, the the hidden comic. 
remedy in that. Sorry, I'm looking for where I was. Two months later, the cows were put up again. The cows replaced the chain's old mad Scott. I'm not going to tell you what the name is because that was a trivia question. An anthropomorphized chicken who still appears as the C on the logo. Chick-fil-A vigorously protects its intellectual property, sending cease and desist letters to those they think have infringed on their trademarks. The corporation has successfully protested at least 30 instances of the use of eat more phrase, saying that the use would cause confusion of the public, dilute the distinctiveness of their intellectual property, and diminish its value. Yeah, it's fine. You don't have to tell me. A 2011 letter to Vermont artist Bo Mueller Moore, whose green Prince t-shirt is reading Eat More Kale, demanded that he cease printed the shirts and turn over his website. Oh my gosh, his website, that's kind of, wow. I don't know. Um, the incident grew, drew, sorry, criticism from Vermont Governor Pete Shumlin. Gordon Shumway here and created backlash against what he termed Chick-fil-A's corporate bullying. On December 11, 2014, Bo Muller Moore announced that the U.S. Patent Office granted his application to trademark his eat more kale phrase. Oh, cool. A formal announcement of his victory took place on December 12, 2014 with Shumlin and other supporters on the State House steps. This public fight drew regional and national attention. The support of Shumlin and a team of pro bono law students from the University of New Hampshire Legal Clinic. After 22 years with the Richards Group, Chick-fil-A switched to McCann, New York in 2016. Along with the cows, ads included famous people in history in a campaign called Chicken for Breakfast. It's not as crazy as you think. Hey, it's not, dude. I eat ridiculous shit for breakfast all the time. Anything goes. I want chocolate. I want chocolate. Oh, I got C's. Should I eat? Should I eat? Is it mad? Let me ask you guys something. DB, it's a long wiki read. What do you want? I don't care. I went to C's chocolates today. I went to C's candies. I got a box of chocolates for someone. I got a Bordeaux bar and a box of chocolates for someone. I want to eat those. Can I eat those? Just for me? Because the other person doesn't know that I got it for them yet. And it's not like it's expected. So if I just eat those and they never actually make it, it's like, but I'm not, I, I don't want any credit for having got them for them in the first place. If I eat them, it just kind of nullifies it. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll eat them and then I'll buy another box and then I'll give that to them. Okay, mystery solved. Thank you for figuring that out with me. Okay, sponsored events. Chick-fil-A Classic. The Chick-fil-A Classic is a high school basketball tournament held in Columbia, South Carolina. The tournament features nationally ranked players and teams. The tournament is co-sponsored by the Greater Columbia Educational Advancement Foundation, the GCEAF, the GACIF, GACIF, which provides scholarships to high school seniors in the Greater Columbus area. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, first known as the Peach Bowl until 2006 and renamed Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in 2014 as a college football bowl game played each year in Atlanta, Georgia. Chick-fil-A kickoff game, the Chick-fil-A kickoff game is an annual early season college football game played at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia before 2017. It was played at the Georgia Dome. It features two nightly, sorry, highly, not nightly, ranked teams, one of which has always been from the Southeastern Conference. In the 2012 season, and again, 2014 the season, the event was expanded to two games. It was also two games in 2017. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl Challenge. Premier head coach and celebrity Pro-Am held each April at Reynolds Plantation on Lake Oconee. Final answer, Oconee. Oh, do I want to go over the same-sex marriage controversy? Let's see if it's like the last thing. I don't think I do. It's just like, I don't like drama when I'm talking about. Let me just like skim over with my eyes really quick to see if it's any kind of, if it would bore me to tears or what. Ugh. They donated a bunch of money to a group that opposed, opposed the same sex in response to students, but I don't know. The banner removed the company's restaurants. Same sex. Oh gosh, it gets kind of <laughs> This gets It makes it sound like I won't like the company I don't know if I want to read the, You know what, I'm going to power through it I'm going to read it, I'm going to be fair I talked them up a bunch Let's like play the other side now to see if they actually suck Okay, god 
damn that's good not a commercial for them I swear to god like like coca-cola needs the money it is actually good I I thought it would suck balls it turns out it's actually really good okay let's hear about how chick-fil-a sucks now Chick-fil-A has donated over $5 million via the Win Shape Foundation to groups that oppose same-sex marriage in response students at several colleges and universities work to ban or remove the company's restaurants from their campuses. In June and July 2012, Chick-fil-A's Chief Operating Officer, Dandy Cathy, made several public statements about same-sex marriage, saying that those who have the audacity to define what marriage is about were inviting God's judgment on our nation. Isn't that weird, though, because doesn't that mean you have the audacity to define what marriage is about? What are we talking about? Several prominent politicians expressed disapproval. Yeah, you think Boston Mayor Thomas Menino and Menino, sorry, in Chicago, Alderman Proco Joe Moreno said they hoped to block franchise expansion into their areas. The proposed bans drew criticism from liberal pundits. Pundits. It's a weird word. Pundit. Legal experts and the American Civil Liberties Union, the Jim Henson Company, which had a pajaminal, pajanimals, pudge, page animal, yeah, like pajamas, pajanimals, kids meal by, I'm sorry, what the hell, start over, the Jim Henson Company, which had a pajanimals, kids meal, there you go, toy licensing arrangement with Chick-fil-A, said it would cease its business relationship and donate the payment to the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. It's funny. Chick-fil-A stopped distributing the toys, claiming that unrelated safety concerns had arisen prior to the controversy. Oh, okay. Chick-fil-A released a statement on July 31st, 2012, saying, We are a restaurant company focused on food, service, and hospitality. Our intent is to leave the policy debate over same-sex marriage to the government and political arena. Yeah, but you used the money that was generated by the company to further that, so, and you're publicly traded, so, and you went and said that stuff in public, so, what are we doing? In response to the controversy, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee initiated a Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day movement to counter boycott of Chick-fil-A launched by saying that the sex marriage activists, the United States Federal Aviation Administration also responded to two cities that were preventing Chick-fil-A from opening in their international airport, citing federal requirements to prohibit airport operators from excluding persons on the basis of religious creation participants. Oh my gosh. Okay, so long story short, they got their asses handed to them on a plate. Chick-fil-A reportedly continued to donate the fellowship to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes who oppose gay marriage. In a November 18, 2019 interview with Chick-fil-A, President Tim Tassopoulos, that is a Greek name, I'm familiar with the Poulos uh, surname, said the company would stop donating to the Salvation Army and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Okay. Moving on. Related restaurants. The Hapville Dwarf House. Troy Cathy opened his first restaurant in 1946, the Dwarf Grill, later renamed the Dwarf House in Hapville, Georgia, developed the pressure cooked chicken breast sandwich there. At the original Chick fil A Dwarf Grill, in addition to the full size entrances, there's also an extra small sized front door. The original Dwarf House in Hatville, Georgia, is open 24 hours a day, 6 days a week, except on Sundays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. The store closes at 10 p.m. on Saturday nights and the night, I'm sorry, the day before Thanksgiving and Christmas, and reopens at 6 a.m. on Monday mornings and the day after Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's a larger dine and menu than another Dwarf House location, as well as an animated Seven Dwarfs display in the back of the restaurant. That's cool. It was across the street from the former Ford Motor Company factory car. We you know, read about that earlier. Dwarf House opened in 1986 through its original full-service restaurant to offer a substantial menu and provide customers with a choice of table service, walk-up counter service, or a drive through window. There's six Chick-fil-A Dwarf House restaurants. We're opening in the metro Atlanta area, including Duluth, Riverdale, Woodstock, Jonesboro, Forest Park, and Fayetteville. Truett's Grill in 1996. The first Truett's Grill was open in Morrow, Georgia. The second location opened in 2003 in McDonough, Georgia. And a third location opened in 2006 in Griffin, Georgia. Similar to the Chick-fil-A Dwarf House, these independently owned restaurants offer traditional sit-down dining and expanded 
menu selections in a diner themed restaurant 2017 Chick fil A demolished several board house locations to replace them with Truett's Grill locations. Truett's Chick fil A. Oh. No. Hold on. Truett's Chick fil A. Truett's Chick fil A is designed in honor of founder S. Truett and Kathy. The restaurant is decorated with family photos and paper quotes of the restaurant founder. The restaurant offers drive through counter, and sit-down service. The restaurant offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are three locations, including Noonan, Rome, and Stockbridge, Georgia. Truett's Luau. Truett Kathy visited Hawaii and loved the experience so much that he wanted to bring Hawaii to Fayetteville, Georgia. At the age of 92, he opened Truett's Luau in 2013. The menu includes island favorites with a southern spin. The restaurant offers sit-down, counter, and drive through service. Wow. 92 of the menu. Oh, it looks like we're at the end, at the end too. Uh, menu based on data from 2018. The most popular and most ordered item was the waffle fries, of course, followed by soft drinks, chicken nuggets, and the original chicken sandwich. I like the deluxe. The deluxe is one of the best chicken sandwiches on the goddamn planet. The irony of me, me saying GD in this article. These items should be available at every franchise location with some locations offering the full menu or close to the full menu. The full list of menu items and nutrition information can be found on Chick-fil-A's website. Cool, bro. We got through it. Chick-fil-A is, yeah, they're delicious. What do you want me to say is everything I already said that I like the deluxe sandwich first time I ever saw them was when I was studying at a university, never graduated for what it's worth, and if anyone ever like hears me say, yeah, I was at a university, just so you know, I didn't graduate if anyone cares. I've studied a lot of different things, I've studied electrical engineering, I've studied real estate, I've studied, like, you know, actually at universities for different shit like that, real estate development, but I also had a real estate license at one point, which didn't even require much schooling at all, and, um, uh, aerospace stuff, design stuff, and anyway, when I was at a certain university, they had a Chick-fil-A there, and like, the line was always so long, and this was years ago, this was like 15 years ago, the line was always long, and I never tried it, and also, I called it the wrong name for like five years, I thought it was chick a because I'm dyslexic or something, and literally, like, I would look at it and people would look at me like I had three heads. I was like, oh, yeah, like I saw you online at chick They're like, cool, man. Uh, you're you're that guy that I'm going to be avoiding on campus from now on. I'd be like, enjoy your day. And I wouldn't know why. chick I called it chick It's Chick-fil-A, clearly. It took years, years to unprogram that. Kidding. Once I found out it was actually Chick-fil-A, I said it normally again. Okay, I think I'm done. I don't think there's anything else I want to say. How long was this one? Let's go to OBS. I have to go there anyway to kill this recording, I think. How long have we been going? It doesn't feel like it was that long because I've been comfy on my bed. 50 minutes. How much is going to be cut out out of 50 minutes, do you think? 10 minutes. 20 minutes. It's going to be a 30-minute video. I do wonder. Yeah, we're good. You might be sleeping. If you're not sleeping, you're gaming, right? No one just sits and actually watches me, right? Like, I feel like that would be weird. I don't even watch, but let's see. What what are I listen to? Um, as many of you know, Rogan. Oh, yes, I will. I can't believe I forgot your name. You've been asking for a Rogan interview. Like, every, not interview, Rogan read every single day is hilarious. How do, it starts with an M. Mando. Is it Mando? What's your name? Let's go to the comments really quick. Hang out with you guys for a little bit. Uh, where was it? Content and comments. And I have responded. Keyboard. Where are you? It was not true. I'm so sorry. There it is. Yeah, it is Mando. Just Mando. Might as well put it on a t-shirt at this point. The Joe Rogan wiki has to happen. We'll do it. We'll do Joe Rogan sometime this week. I'll read the Joe, Joe Rogan one. Anyway, yeah, I listened to Joe Rogan, and then I listened to, um, uh, deal, the, uh, 
uh, to Leah's stuff. I listened to Congratulations, I listened to Fighter and the Kid, and I'm not sitting, and well, I, those are just some, obviously, you know, like I'll watch Mr. Beast and PewDiePie and everything. I, li I watch and I listen. To, oh, Howie Mandel, been listening to a lot of Howie Mandel lately. Like, I really, really like, and he's only got like 26,000 subs. It's weird. Maybe it's because he lives nearby. Maybe that's why. It's like, and, and I love his comedy, and he's Jewish. Like, there's a lot of things that I just, like, connect with this guy on. And so I, he's just a very familiar kind of personality. He reminds me of people that I grew up with. Like, like family members, family. Like, it's weird. Howie Mandel, actually, literally, he could fit right into my family, no problem, I think. Or I could fit into his, however you want to crack that. I've been listening to a lot of Howie Mandel lately. But for all of those people that I just listed, I don't watch any of them. I'm listening, even if I'm playing them on YouTube, you know, they just sit here in my bed while I'm playing video games, or they're in my car while I'm driving, obviously, or when I'm sitting here, like be in my car just sitting, waiting for someone, or just chilling. And maybe then I'm watching them if I'm sitting in my car waiting for someone then maybe I will actually watch the podcast itself, but other than that, I'm not watching it. I'm always assuming nobody is watching this. Always. It, that's why it's weird for me to have video. Like, so much so that I believe that no one watches this so much that, like, part of me has wanted to, like, flash something on the screen every once in a while, like an Amazon redemption code and see if anyone actually redeems it because like there's the dog again if you could hear it there's another thing like um like 40 minutes in like could i i feel like i could bank on nobody actually watching this at 40 minutes in and i could just flash the code and then see when it gets redeemed i won't do it though anyway i think we're good i think we're good here right should i should i eat the egg should I eat the C's egg right now and then go right into a C's candy? Uh, what's it called? Wiki reading. Oh, I gotta do a Reddit reading, actually, is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read some Reddit, so I'll have two things that were already recorded. First, I'm gonna see how this looks to see if this whole setup worked out. And then I'm gonna, um... I should go to sleep. I got sushi to go to in. Oh, it's five. This clock is wrong. This is an hour. It's five a.m. Oh my god! I'm. Just, I'm gonna bring back the R word just for me. I feel like you should be able to call yourself that. I think, because really, it's just to slow the progression of something, and that's me like all the time. That's another story. Anyway, I'm gonna go and I will talk to you guys in the comments. I already said like and subscribe in the middle of it. I didn't say though it helps the algorithm so I'll say that now. It helps the algorithm. Thank you. And that's it. I like this. It's a good room. This is a good room to do this in. I swear I'm not running the clock. There's, there's no num. I'm already past like anything. Optimally, you're supposed to shoot for like between 10 and 20 minutes for like the niche YouTube engagement where you're gonna get suggested to everything. I guess according to Mr. Beast, that's what he says, like between 10 and 20 minutes. So I'm already way past. I don't even know why. There's no reason for me to keep talking just to, for the sake of talking in case there's anyone that's out there. There was this one dude that left a comment one time, not on this channel, on another another one, where he saw that my uh, video was 10 minutes, exactly 10 minutes, and he comments like, oh nice that it's 10 minutes trying to make the YouTube money or something like that, suggesting like I made it 10 minutes because at the 10 minute mark you can get to put in mid rolls and a bunch of other ones, but that wasn't the case. I just actually saw on my timeline, it was really close to 10 minutes and I was like, ah, I'll chop it off right there, that's a good number. Chop, you're a 10 minute video. And then you get shit from someone else that's just like, oh, you're doing it for money. Which in that case I wasn't, but what if I was? What's wrong if someone's literally making a video to make money? Are people crazy in this world? People are crazy. I need to go. I've said I'm leaving like five times now. Okay, I, you know why? This. Because I literally just drank 